So I grew up in Sweden and into a family, a very strong family, where athletics and uh, uh, academics were emphasized. And uh, I excelled at both. It came easily for me at the level that I was playing tennis on the Swedish national team at the age of 14 and 16. So nothing really could have prepared me for the shock of being diagnosed with type 1 diabetes the summer I was turning 17. My family reacted well to this. We accommodated, our diet changed somewhat, and uh, I made two decisions, two important decisions. One was I was going to learn as much as I could about the disease, which meant that I was determined to go to medical school. And secondly, I was, although I was learning about it, I was not going to let anyone know because I saw this as a, a very big deficiency, uh, really a failure of contracting a disease that was really not my fault. So I continued to uh, really excel in academics and doing what I had done in the past, but with focus on finding a cure for diabetes. And uh, I also excelled at my control in diabetes. My blood sugar levels were good, and I stayed very much on top of my disease. So this was for the first 10 years. I completed high school and then uh, medical school and even got a PhD in diabetes. I was very committed to this space. Um, uh, but during that time, I also got very tired of constantly managing this, di this disease and being very much alone with the disease since I wasn't going to admit to anyone else that I had this deficiency. So when I moved to the US, which I did from Sweden after medical school and my PhD, to continue to work in the space, and from there on I continued on Wall Street and in a, in a company that went public on NASDAQ, I really lost my way because I didn't want to live any longer as a patient. I wanted to have a life. I didn't want to continuously measure my blood sugar levels, and I didn't want to accommodate to everything else that other people did not have to do. On average, a person with diabetes has to make an additional 200 decisions every day. And you can imagine in a normal life you have to make a lot of decisions. So this was taking an extra toll on me, and for some reason I took a break. And, and this uh, ended up being a, a, a little bit of a, a problem on my body. It ended up being such a problem that I found myself in a hospital bed, uh, really with a need to get a kidney. Because my kidneys, my eyes, my microvascular system had taken a very big toll from probably having a genetic predisposition to getting diabetic complications, but also because of this somewhat under management of the, the disease that happens very often actually still in this day and age. So I was very lucky, my family came together and my father donated a kidney to me. This was now seven years ago. And nine months later, I got a pancreas transplant. So if the kidney saved my life, my pancreas transplant really transformed and made my life worth living again. And two things happened again at this stage in my life. One was that I had no option but coming out and really letting people know that I had a problem. I had the disease. I didn't only have the disease, but I had the complications of diabetes. And secondly, I decided not to just focus on learning so much about the disease and working in the financial and, uh, and, and industry side of the disease, but I wanted to really share with people what it's like living with the disease and helping others uh, further. So uh, I know personally that diabetes is a disease that kills, it cripples, there is no vaccination, there is no cure, and it is progressive. It's hard to live with those facts. In fact, uh, diabetes is still the most common reason for uh, kidney failure in the developed world. It's the most common reason for blindness and for non-traumatic amputations. If you have diabetes, you have two to four times higher risk of heart disease and stroke. So this is a hard disease to live with. It is not only uh, a disease for the Western or for the developed world, it is a global pandemic. Actually, 80% of all cases with diabetes are right now in the developing world where the resources are obviously less. So um, in the country where I'm currently residing in the US, there are 29 million people with diabetes. There are another 86 million with pre-diabetes, of which 30% will convert to diabetes. 
There are two kinds of diabetes, type 1, which is what I have, which is an autoimmune disease, often diagnosed in children or in teenagers. Uh, it is autoimmune, which means that the immune system of the person attacks the very cells that produce insulin. So there is a complete insulin deficiency when the person is diagnosed, and you will need insulin for the rest of your lives. Type 2 diabetes is the more common disease, uh, which is in 90% of the cases. And there, it's often diagnosed in elderly people, and if people are somewhat overweight. So what does the world do about this disease? Well, the doctors are often overwhelmed and they are, are, are losing really the battle because they're not paid enough for the disease. Because this is a disease without real procedures. It's more about education. Patients are often not compliant because they're tired of battling this disease on a daily basis. And society sees it as a disease that is more of a lifestyle problem and patients are often to blame for the disease. And therefore, there's a perception that the disease is flawed. And as we know, perception creates reality. And this is what's seen now in the diabetes industry. And when I talk about diabetes industry, it's both the caring industry as well as the manufacturing industry. So what we're seeing here is that the number of patents generated each year coming down Money raised is going down. New companies in this space are less and less, and there are fewer diabetes doctors. For the companies in this space, the cost for drug approval is increasing, and the time from discovery to market increasing. And therefore, the diabetes industry is hurting. So what are we going to do about this? Well, in my opinion, it's really up to us, the patients. We need to take responsibility, and we need to start acting. We need to be less of a victim and be innovators and teachers and get involved. That means that we need to help doctors. We need to be uh, telling doctors what it's like living with this disease, why compliance is so low, and we need to start force amplifying. There are not enough doctors to take care of all the people with diabetes. Therefore, we can, as patients, be peer-to-peer -peer mentoring and help other patients overcome some of the hurdles. When it comes to the healthcare industry, we should not just be waiting for new solutions that may be presented to us, but we need to be seen as resources. We are the evangelist, we are the consumer, we are the client. We need to be putting pressure on the healthcare industry so that better products are coming out and products more amenable to people like us. We can also get involved in regulatory approaches and reimbursement to really enable products to get to market and not just be in the pipelines. Supporters, here I include parents, relatives, friends, but also people who have no connection to diabetes. It's our obligation to speak to them and to educate them so that the perception does not continue to create a reality that is flawed. Entrepreneurs, this is a, a favorite topic of mine because I do believe that the patients are the ones that can best identify needs and therefore when we have a need we can create solutions. Every person on this slide is an individual who is an entrepreneur who is also a person with diabetes. And they've created a product or an entire company. And this, I think, is a really good way for patients to, again, not be victims, but actually benefit from the fact that they have the disease because they can create even more innovative products and be committed to the space. So what does this all look like? How do we put it together? And especially, how do we create future wealth? Well, uh, I think the diabetes pandemic we've shown is here. It's causing human suffering. It's impacting society. I used to think I was alone. I didn't share with anyone that I had this disease. But now I know there's so many like me. There's so many people out there. And what we need to do is to connect. We need to inspire each other so that we can impact the diabetes ecosystem. We can do this through being patient entrepreneurs, creating new products and solutions. If we are mentors or speakers, we can engage in speaker series and improve societal understanding, or peer-to-peer -peer mentoring and improve the compliance for other people taking the products. If we want to be involved with the healthcare industry to create more relevant products, then we can be engaged through patient uh, panels or even directly with the healthcare companies. They are embracing that because we're the customer. 
regulatory pathways and payers, we can be engaged in patient advocacy and really push that forward. As a patient public figure, I think we have an obligation to try to generate more interest for this space. And by having more interest, there will be more money and be more talent. So my call for action today is for everyone to get involved, to take responsibility, because together we can solve the diabetes problem. Thank you.